Welcome to a tour of the SharePoint QMS that follows these articles. Before I went any further in the development, I wanted to show you what the end product is. That way it might make some of the items that I've shown you make a little bit more sense. So we're going to start off with looking at the home page and then I'll show you some of the behind the scenes. Um, from the home page, you can navigate through most of the systems. The structure that I've laid out in previous articles is this is where you see where it comes into play. Um, some of the parent category, for example, and the functional category one that I've talked about and how important those are, you'll get to see that here. The bulk of our navigation takes place here at the quality management system. There's a QMS main and this is where we keep the quality manual, quality records, CPARs, um, corrective and preventive actions, our um, DIR logs, so those are changes to documents, internal audits, and um, we've also got some functionality to allow you to initiate a document change. I'm going to go to the production area. Now if you remember from the examples that I gave earlier on, this is where the parent category comes into play. So parent categories are basically the departments or the areas within your quality management system or within your company where you want to divide those documents up. So if you were thinking about the chapters of a book, how would you want work instructions and SOPs and forms organized so that they're easy to get to for the shop floor? So that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing a list of those parent categories. We have production and also non-production areas in here. I'm going to go into um, one of our production areas so you can see how these pages are laid out. Um, from our home page here, though, the quality policy is always available right on the home page so that um, that's available for everybody and fulfills one of the requirements of ISO. Of how do you communicate your quality policy? There's a couple of other things that I have available on the home page. Um, one of them is a what's new section. So your auditor will often ask you, how do you communicate um, changes to SOPs or your documents or forms? And the what's new area is a filter that allows me to filter by parent category um, new things, things that have happened in the last 60 days. So from here, Right from the home page, the um, leak detection area, for example, can go in and can see that there are four new SOPs within their section in the last 60 days. So it's just a quick place to go and see what's new. Uh, there's some couple of other things in here. I'm not going to cover too much in this tutorial. We're going to start with our mill section. I won't be showing anything proprietary here, but I am giving you an overview of how this is organized. On the mill page, this is one department within our manufacturing system, you'll notice that this list is one list. Um, it's actually a library in SharePoint, and this is filtered by the parent category of mill, and then functional category, which I talked about in the setup, of building your QMS, that's what you're seeing here. So within the mill, then I have these areas or chapters in the book of how do I do a changeover or making a hookup or milling a string, etc. So think of that this as the chapter is mill um, and the sections within that chapter are where the SOPs and work instructions reside. And we also have our ERP system information in here too, and that's separated out a little bit using functional category. If I open up one of these, I'm going to click on the FC and that will open up and then you get a list of the um, SOPs, work instructions that are included within that group or that section. So this gives us very easy and quick access to those SOPs. And I think in um, article number one, I showed you what our SOPs look like, where they have an area for training and for auditing, et cetera, et cetera. They can also see what the current revision is, what the document ID is. Um, we had an old system, so we have the old reference in here, which is useful for some people who've been here a bit longer. And I'll talk about this 
more in a uh, in a later article that talks about how you can do job competencies. But this allows for very easy and quick access to all of their SOPs and work instructions. You'll see this one here is a work instruction and these are SOPs. They're in Visio format turned into a PDF. We also have the forms that are relative to this section. Those are listed over here on the right hand side and if I slide down a bit this is giving you a bit of a preview um, but we have also an area for assessments and on the job training. This is great for your auditors to be able to um, prove your competency to the job. And the assessments and on the job training module I'll talk about in a later article. Here I just wanted to give you some context of why the importance of the parent category and the FC1 is important. And this is what it will end up looking like. I'm going to go back to my main page and just give you a little tour of another section just so you can see. And you'll see it's laid out pretty much the same. Here's my Slitter um, SOPs and they're within their functional categories as well listed out the same way. There's the name of it, the document number, the current rev, and if there's a job responsibility. We also have assessments and on the job training listed here as well. These are all the ones that have happened for 2016. And again, I'll talk about that in a um, later article. Now, just to give you a peek at the back end, I also have my site contents open. And this is where you would actually build those lists and libraries. And you can see in here that I have a um, parent department, or and there's also a, the FC1, which is those categories one level down. And that is what's used to organize the other lists. Let me give you a little bit of a back-end view of where all of our documents reside. This is the quality system documentation table. And we'll do a tutorial on this, but I'm just giving you a little tour right now. Now, in this model, this actually holds all the different document types. So if I pull down the document type here, you can see controlled forms are in here, desk guides, which is our EIP, ERP desk guides. There's the equipment manual. Um, if there's references that are outside the system, those are in here too. Job descriptions, JHAs, the quality manual, and also SOP specs, work instructions, and our welding manual. So the document type allows me to filter the records that I want. Now, a lot of times in older systems, that's where you'd use folders within folders within folders. The real power of SharePoint is the ability to use metadata. And metadata is the additional description fields that are available to tag a document. And that is completely customizable. What you're looking at here is a list of the metadata that I have set up for this particular library. So all of these fields I have created in order to be able to filter, to sort, to group um, the documents within my QMS. This is the real power. This is the real engine of SharePoint. Using that, then I can also set up additional views. So if you kind of imagine this as a um, dynamic Excel spreadsheet. These groupings allow me to set up things called views in SharePoint. And here I can see all activity for the last 30 days. I can see items by modified date. These are views that I've set up and you can see that I've got quite a few of them. One of the ones that I'm um, pretty proud of and that I like to show to auditors is show me all documents by ISO subtitle. This allows me to show an auditor how do we fulfill the requirements of the quality manual. 
and I can pull that open and show them there's the quality manual and there's some overview documents and sequence and interactions. How do I fulfill the requirements of control of documents? You can see that in there that we have an acknowledgement form of receipt. We have the document and data control policy. We also have the form for um, making changes or issuing new SOPs or work instructions and also that DIR process. DIR stands for document issue request. Quality records, there's a document that is a quality record. And you'll notice here these tags. Remember I showed you document type a little bit earlier. These tags also allow me to group by the tag. This is a controlled form. This is part of the quality manual. This is an SOP. So it can also group and sort and filter by those dynamically. Or I can save a view to use over and over and over again or save a view with a particular filter that shows up underneath these pages. So this list here is the same list you're seeing here with over 500 items in it. It's just filtered to parent category mill and then grouped by functional category one. So that's just a little bit of looking at the back end of our system here. Um, you'll notice that I've also got the API 9th edition, so I can group by that too and filter by that. Um, and this is how this um, program is, is quite dynamic and allows you to fulfill requirements of ISO 9001-2008 or your 2015 or API um, 8th edition or 9th edition. It's just another uh, reference within your metadata to allow you to look at that. That's probably enough for this little video. Um, more to come on that. I just wanted to give you an idea of those two tables and why they are so important to the system and they're so critical. Uh, they are part of the metadata. You can see here, there's your parent department and your FC1 where it's relevant. Hope you enjoyed this little overview and tune in next time and we'll do some actual roll our sleeves up and get some things built.